Hello and welcome to the evolution of a website into Array Automation Backend, where I will tell you how my first Django project has evolved over more than a decade. I am Ernesto Rico Schmidt. Rico is not my middle name, and I am an electric engineer turned software developer. I was born in Bolivia, where I am currently living after spending half of my life in Graz in Austria. I have been using Linux and free software for almost 30 years now. I have programmed in almost in all sorts of programming languages since I was studying in Graz. I discovered Python around 2003 and started with Django around 2008. Currently I work with Django and Go. I work as a remote software developer for Radio Helsinki in Graz, one of the 14 free radios in Austria. In the three attempts it took me more than a year but I translated Doc Hellman's Python 3 model of the week into Spanish. Free radios started in Austria as in other places all over the world as pirate radios. Broadcasting without a license until 1997 when a new regional radio law was passed ending the state broadcasting monopoly. Now they are recognized as non-commercial radios and receive some funding from the state or their cities. A free radio has a fundamental differences from commercial ones. It's a non-profit and community driven. As such, it serves very diverse communities that don't have access to commercial broadcasting radios. Radio Helsinki started to broadcast in 1999 for a month during the art festival known as Starische Herbst. In 2000, Radio Helsinki obtained their first license to broadcast 24 hours. Back then, almost every show was live. Now, about 80% of the shows are either pre-recorded or rebroadcast from other free radios. This is part of the program for Radio Helsinki from February to May 2023. It's difficult to see and distinguish, but the font colors signal different types of show and the different color bars signal the rhythms they follow. This is the first challenge that commercial radio broadcasting software faces. The initial goal of the project PV for Program Verwaltung or Program Management at Radio Helsinki was to display the shows and the schedule in a daily and weekly overviews and to integrate them into the website. This led to a mixed solution. In 2011, the website from Radio Helsinki was powered by Chrome and included all the program data from the backend. This sounded way cooler to me back then and was something I was really proud of. Please forget for a minute that REST was already a thing at the time. YARN, or yet another radio manager, was originally developed at Radio Fabrik in Salzburg, one of the other Austria's free radios. It's an open source, but I have to admit I have never seen the repository, any source or even a readme. Currently, YARN is used at six free radios in Austria, despite the development of the software being abandoned in 2014. YARN is a Java monolith application that has one fundamental flow. It doesn't offer any remote interface. That has led to some radio stations to ask their hosts to upload their pre-recorded shows, then to have the program managers download them and schedule them. This is the second challenge that commercial radio broadcasting software faces. At Radio Helsinki, we use Rivendell, another open source radio management solution to automate almost everything in the program. We have developed a simple interface for the host to upload and schedule their shows remotely. 
After Radio Helsinki, we have about 120 shows that pre record the trip or rebroadcast. Currently, the main limitation is that we are when we are broadcasting some live event or from a live stream from a remote location, we need somebody to be present in the studio all the time to start and monitor the stream. This situation led some of the free radios in Austria to start thinking about the joint project to tackle all these requirements that are more or less common to all free radios by developing a new open source software suite. Then in 2017, a pro the project Aura started based on Radio Helsinki's contributions and other radios' contributions. From the beginning, the project was envisioned with a distributed architecture in order to avoid the limitations that YARN has. The different components of Aura <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> the different components of Aura communicate over their uh, HTTP APIs. The whole suite is made up of modular components which could be exchanged with other components. Every component provides a well documented API. At the moment, only the engine is developed with an API first approach. The other ones, the steering and tank, the APIs are generated out of the code base. At the core of Aura is steering, the Django application that is the source of truth for the program. Steering stores the information about the program and offers a REST API to manage this information. It is intended to uh, provide the information to drive the broadcast and to provide the data to be displayed on the radio's website. Steering also acts as an OpenID Connect provider for the other components. Tank stores the playlist and the media for the playout for the shows, including metadata if it's available. A playlist can contain a combination of media files and other sources like line in or streams. The engine is the main playout component. It's in charge of playing the media and switching between the sources or studios according to the playlists stored in the tank. The engine provides a public and internal APIs to and uses the liquid SOP language for the playout. The engine also includes silence detection and optionally records the output. The dashboard provides the user interface to steering and tank. It currently allows the managers to create, update, and delete shows and schedules. It also allows the hosts of the shows to manage their and organize their media and playlists. It will allow, it will offer different set of features and permissions depending on roles and privileges that can be configured individually by each radio station. And finally, Play is a library of web components that can be integrated into the radio station's website to display the program, including what's currently playing. The program is modeled using shows, schedules, and time slots. The show part is obvious. It includes the name, the description, the host or hosts, in other taxonomy, like the category, the type, or the language of the show. The schedule describes the rhythm of the repetitions for the show, according to the recurrence rules. The schedule is used to generate the time slots. The time slot represents a specific time that's assigned for a show in the playout. 
Recurrence rules govern how a show repeats, in which written how often or how long it repeats. They are a wrap around the duties air rule object. Currently, Aura supports a total of 31 recurrence rules, including once, daily, weekly, bi weekly, four weekly, monthly, bi monthly, three monthly, and four monthly. Radio Helsinki supports and uses bi weekly, weekly, bi weekly, and four weekly recurrences. Radio Orange in Vienna supports weekly, bi weekly, and monthly recurrence. Initially, we had support for what we called bi weekly every odd numbered and bi weekly every even numbered recurrences. But it turns out this is a very odd recurrence rule because every approximately seven years, the year has 53 weeks. The next time will be in 2026. The first day is a Thursday and the last day is also a Thursday. This results in the first week of 2027 being odd numbered of the last week of 2026 being also odd numbered. That means if you have a show scheduled on odd numbered weeks, you will get a bi weekly show scheduled two weeks in a row. And if you have a show scheduled on even numbered weeks, you will get a no bi weekly show scheduled for two weeks in a row. The detection and solution of time lot collisions was a major headache with the original Django project that managed or, or better tried to manage everything in the admin interface. It was not part, I was not part of the Aura project back then, but luckily Ingo Leindecker studied the collisions that can arise and contributed to the detection and solution of time slot collisions. Let's take a look at them. The first one is the single collision that fully overlaps. Here we have a projected time slot and an existing time slot that fully overlap. In this case, there are two possible solutions. We can keep the existing time slot and discard the projected one. The solution is what we call in the API theirs. The other solution for this case is what we call ours. We delete the existing time slot and create the projected one. These two solutions are always possible whenever a collision occurs. The next type of collision is a single collision that partially overlaps. Here we have a projected time slot and existing time slot that partially overlapped. In this case, the projected time slot starts before the existing one has ended. In this, in this case, we, are, we have four possible solutions for this collision. The first, we keep the existing time slot, created a new truncated slot time slot that starts at the end of the existing time slot. We call this solution there's start. The second possible solution, we create the projected time slot and change the existing time slot to end at the start of our projected one. We call this ours start. The third possible solution <clears throat> is to keep the existing time slot create a truncated time slot that ends at the start of the existing one. We call this there's end. And the fourth solution is we create the projected time slot and change the existing time slot to start at the end of the projected one. We call this one hours, hours end. All the previous solutions are also available in this case. And finally, we have the 
simple collision, single collision, where is a superset? That means that one, the pro, in case, this case, the projected time slot is the superset of the existing one. In this case, we have one solution. We keep the existing time slot and create two, two new time slots around the existing one. We call this their spot. And we have a subset here. The projected time slot is a subset of the existing one. And there is one solution for this case. We create the projected time slot, split the existing one in two, one, in two around the projected one. Now let's see this in action. I want to show you how the collision resolution works with a simple example here. I have created a show and here is the JSON file that describes it. And I have this JSON file describing a new scale that I want to create. It's from Monday 29th from 15.05 to 15.35 and it's only once. When I create this with the post request the response returns a 201 created with the new schedule that is on the 29th from 15.05 15.35 if I try to create this scale once again it will obviously collide with the previous one now I get a 409 conflict that shows me that the projected time slot collides with this one This collision has a hash, hash and two possible solutions. If there were multiple collisions, I will get them all in this list of objects, and each one will have a hash ID, a hash and possible solutions. In this case, all I need to do is provide the solution in the solutions dictionary the hash as key and ours as, as value in order to replace this. Now I see they have a 201 created, it creates a a new schedule on the 29th from 15.05 to 15.35 and I can see that the time slot is created for this time. This is all possible thanks to people that has contributed in the past and the team that is currently working on Aura. The team currently is Margaret Mayahovalishka, she is the product owner for Aura. Christian Poena is the lead developer of the tank. David Tratnik is the lead developer for the engine. Conrad, Conrad Morfeld is the lead developer for the dashboard. Ole Binder is the lead developer for the engine recorder. I am currently the lead developer for the steering. I want to close with a quote from Marcelo Bielsa. Marcelo Bielsa is a former football player, manager and coach from Argentina. He has coached the national teams from Argentina and Chile and will coach the team from Uruguay into the next World Cup.
The possible is already done, the impossible we are doing it for miracles we need time. At Aura we are currently working on the second alpha release for Aura 1.0. We are finishing the APIs and causing some bugs. We expect to release the first beta in the first quarter of 2024. We should deploy Aura at Radio Orange in Vienna and the Radio Helsinki in Graz after that, maybe around the summer. If you are interested in the project, would like to check out what Aura currently offers, maybe give it a try or contribute, don't hesitate to reach out. You can visit our website and reach me over Mastodon. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. I want to thank the organizers of this year's DjangoCon Europe for this opportunity and I hope to be part of a DjangoCon Europe in person in the future. You yeah, have your website and you can reach me over at Mastodon. The photo of the vintage radio was by Maximilian Hofer from Unsplash. Thank you very much.